Okay, so hopefully I'll be able to put these two videos together because I accidentally stopped it. So I've got all my paints that we made earlier. Um, my pudding paint really isn't thick enough yet, but I want to get started on this. But yours will be much thicker if you you know do it a few hours ahead of time or overnight. Um, so what the activity is is you can get um, you can do one of these animals. You can do all four of them over you know days or weeks, whatever if you like to do them. Um, but there's going to be four different farm animals, and you can use paper plates. I didn't have any paper plates, so I just cut out white circles. So um, the first thing is I am going to um, have some of my pink. It's pink. Um, so I'm going to use my pink corn syrup paint, um, and I'm just going to spread it all over my pig. Probably didn't look enough to, to do my whole pig. Um, I'm just going to paint this circle kind of a pinkish color. You can color it if you don't want to paint it. You can color it with markers, with crayons. You can use a different kind of paint. If you have real paint, you can use real paint. That's fine too. Um, so I'm just painting this all over with pink paint. Like I said, my pink's not coming out very great, but let's see. Let's spread it out a little more. And it doesn't have to completely be covered, you know, I'm not ever looking for to, to, to do perfect things. Um, we're just looking for them to do the process of exploring the materials and holding a utensil in their hand. So I just scribbled that with my corn syrup paint. I'm going to set that one aside. And then, so that was my pig. And then um, the other one I'm going to do is a chick. And for my chick, I'm going to use my pudding, um, which again, isn't as thick as it needs to be, but I'm still going to do it right now. So you can see it, it'll be a lot thicker and hold up better when you guys do it. Um, but I'm just going to spread it all over again, just like I did with the pig. Just let your child use the brush or with this one, you can then let them use their hands, do more of a finger paint, especially because yours will be a lot thicker than mine. So you see, I just yeah, it's a little bit yellow. So that's oh, and it smells delicious too because it was lemon pudding. Um, and then the other one is going to be a sheep, which we're not going to paint at all. And then the cow, um, which you can paint the cow if you want. Um, let me go grab um, one of the pudding. I didn't make any black paint, but um, I'm going to try just making a different color because it doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to, I hooked a cotton ball up to the clothespin to hold it like a, it'll be like a dabber, um, which also is great for um, bingo dot dots, which I am sending you guys a whole bunch of um, animals that are the dot dots. In fact, I'll get one and do one with you guys. Um, so you can try any kinds of your paint. I'm going to try my um, my blue, make a blue cow, some blue, um, and I just soaked it all up. And I soaked up the blue from my Skittle paint, and I'm just going to dab it on. And again, I told you this would be more like a watercolor. This isn't coming out very dark, um, but you can try different colors. Let me try the green. See how green comes out. Yeah, it's more like a watercolor, um, so it's not really showing up very well. Um, I'm going to try my purple corn syrup one, just because we're making a cow. If it was just a, a regular thing that we were trying to paint, that watercolor stuff would be great. But I want it to show up a little bit better, like more like spots. So I did some spots. If you don't want to do that for the cow, um, the other thing you can do is just cut out um, random black shapes, tiny, you know, smaller shapes, and have your child glue them on um, so to make the cow batches up. Spots. I might do some of that too uh, in the other room when we continue on with this activity. So let me pause it and go so we can finish making these. So if you want to make the pig, what you're going to need is um, I just cut out a white circle and then colored it. It's kind of hard to see, but I colored it with a really light colored pink crayon. And that's going to go in the center of this, and that's going to become like the face. So you just have to do that, or cut one out of pink paper, 
um, or use a darker marker or crayon if you are looking for more of a darker color. Um, and this might actually stick right to the corn syrup, but I'm not sure if it will once it dries, so I'm going to make sure I glue it. If I can get some glue out, I think. This glue works a little better. There we go. So I'm just putting a little glue on there. And then let your child just put it on. And if it doesn't go right in the center, it's fine. It's about them doing it. Let them help you squeeze if they can. And then I also cut two triangles for ears, um, a circle for the snout, and then four um, little, like, kind of rectangle squares for the legs. And I'll show you where these are going to go. Let me get the on. The glue never works when you want it to. All right, so glue on my ears. And my snout. And I forgot my eyes. For the eyes, I just have two little circles, and then I'll color the dark part in. And then I'm going to glue my legs to the, kind of to the back of the plate or the circle. And I'm going to put them all around. I'll show you as soon as I get them all on. I'm going to put them all around the whole circle. So it looks like there's legs on top and on the bottom. Probably should have made a video of animal because this is going to be a really long video if you have to look for the one you want to make. So, let me just make some eyes. And you could also make a tail, which I didn't do. You can make a squiggly tail and hook it to the side too. So there's a pig. Um, just glued all the parts on. I had the child glue them on. Um, and it, it helps if you prep all these things ahead of time. Your child's not going to be patient and wait for you to cut everything out. Um, so then we'll move on to the cow. So like I told you earlier, if you would rather do like spots out of paper, um, you can just cut random pieces out of black paper, no matter what shape they are. Just create different things. I'm um, just cutting a couple more out here. So I just have some random shapes. And then I'm going to glue those on. Since my paint didn't come out as dark as I was hoping. Um, but you could certainly make different colors. You could make a black paint. Um, I just didn't want to, I know you have to mix a lot of colors. Unless you happen to have a black dye of some sort. So I'm just making these to go along with my paint that I put on it. So there you can see now we have our background. So you can see the purple spots and some of the watercolor kind of, and then the black spots. And then like the other ones, uh, like the you need a black circle for the face. <laughs> you need cooperative glue. Glue sticks would be a lot better. Um, and you can put that right in the center. Or wherever, wherever your child sticks it on there. Again, it should be about your child doing it. Um, and then you're going to put on your ears. Which for the ears, I just cut out. Um, kind of like a shape like that. Two pink little ears for the cow. And there's, those are going to go on the side. Kind of a little bit on the side top. There's another ear. I lost an ear. I had a 
little thing. Um, and then I made a little tiny circle for the nose. I'm here. Right here it is. So I kind of got my ears. And then again, two little white circles for the eye. On and then draw a little black circle in the middle. And for the cow's legs, I just made black ones like the pigs. And you can make these fancier if you want. If you want to do them so they're shaped like more like a, a, a animal's foot, you can do that. Um, I just like to make it simple. And then if you have older kids, you can actually have them who need to work on fine motor skills. Um, you can have them cut out the shapes for you. So they can be involved in it and they can make them too. So that'd be great for them to use their scissor skills if they're, that's something that they're working on at this age, at the age they are. Um, so that'd be a great way to involve them and everything. Just put a little glue again, these little deep on the back of the plate. Just spread out around it. And then I'm gonna draw my little eyes. And there you have my cow, which I think I made the nose look more like a pig's nose. But there's my cow. Um, again, you could add a tail if you want. And like I said, just glue the legs onto the back. So there's the cow. Real simple. Again, make sure you have all the pieces if you're going to cut pieces out ready ahead of time. Um, so your child's not waiting for you to get everything done because the two girls don't have the patience for that. All right, I am going to. Um, get the stuff to make the sheep. So for the sheep, we're actually going to glue on cotton balls. Um, but first I want to put the face on so we can work around it with the cotton balls. So we're going to make a black circle for the face. And the bottom is just plain white paper plate or white circle. Just going to put it on there. And then you can also put the eyes on right now if you want. I think we're already done with this circle. And then make sure you draw the little black in the center for the eyes. And then, um, probably easier to do this right now too, we're gonna glue on the black, I made black rectangular legs, just like the cow's legs. And you're gonna glue those to the back like we did with the, the other two animals. And one more. All right. So there's the start. So I have my sheep's face and legs on. And now I'm going to put all the cotton balls on. And to work on those fine motor skills again, have your child pull them apart a little bit. Pull them, pull them apart so they spread out more. Um, and you don't need to waste as many cotton balls that way either. Um, just spread them out. Pull. And it, and it will get stuck to their fingers and it's okay it's great sensory work and it's great fine motor pulling these apart and again you might have to help them either by putting the glue directly on the sheep and then telling them where to put it and telling them to go pat 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 so they're imitating some language there um might be easier doing that than trying to put it actually on the cotton and then getting the cotton in the places um so i might recommend doing that have them help you squeeze it again or if you're using glue sticks, have them rub it onto the sheep. 
Um, so they're a part of what you're doing. So they're learning how to do these things that they'll have to do in preschool someday. And remember, it will get stuck to you, and that's okay. And it doesn't have to be completely covered. That is not the goal of our project to make it look perfect. It's just a, the process of you know, using our fine motor skills, following directions. Let's see what glue in here so we can finish this up. I'm going to spread some more cotton. Maybe one more. Spread it out real good. And there we go. And there's our sheet. Really simple, not a lot of parts to it. You can make it as fluffy as you want, or you can make it as bare as you want. Maybe the sheep just got shared and they're, and they're not looking so thick. Um, but that's the simple little sheep. So um, the last animal is the chick, which with the chick, of course, you could do feathers if you wanted to. Um, if you didn't want to do the, um, the pudding paint, you could always use the feathers instead. This is as thick as nothing is more. I'm going to put a little more of my pudding paint on here. Thicken it up a little bit more. It does really smell good when you're doing it. And it's okay. You can see that that's the best part. They can finger paint this one and then they can eat it. Because it's sitting with water in it. So nothing is going to hurt them. All right. So let me go gather the stuff for this. Okay, so just remember if you're doing, if you decide you want to do feathers for the chick instead of painting it yellow, um, glue the face on first. But if you're doing it after, of course, put that face on after if you're painting it. I'm going to have just enough glue to finish this last project here. All right, so you glue on your circle. Um, you might want to make, if you're using the pudding paint, you want to make, wait till it dries. To do the next step, which is putting on all the parts. Uh, otherwise, it might be a little challenging to do because it'll be pretty wet. Oh, glue's almost gone. All right. One eye, two eyes. Again, just like the other animals, I, I actually I actually cut them out all at the same time um, to make it easier. And then a little triangle. A little triangle for the nose that I just colored a white piece of paper orange. You could use orange paper. You could use something else if you think of something more creative. You could use foam, of course. And then the chick, of course, only has two little feet, and I just made bigger triangles for those. And again, I'm going to glue those right on. I'm going to glue these ones on the front, I think. See if it's, I think it might be that way. There you go, there's the little tick. And the nice thing about these is you can do the same parts. So maybe if you have multiple kids who want to do it. Oh, I did the feet upside down. I just realized <laughs> as I looked at it in the computer. That yeah, looks a little better. Put the feet upside down or triangles the right direction, not the same direction as the feet. So the nice part is if you have more kids and they want to each of these to a different one, because you can cut all the pieces out together, all the main pieces. Um, and then you just have little, little differences in the pieces for the other ones. So there is the end of that. Let me now just go get one of our bingo dot dots and show you what we can do with them. Okay. So these are our dot dots that we do in school all the time. This is the rooster. Um, there's all kinds of them I'm sending you guys that you can print out whatever ones you want. And you can do it with, I mean, you can use markers and just dot in them or color in them. Um, or you can do, do like we did with the painting of the cow and make your own dot dots. Or if you have dot dots, that's great. Use the dot dots. You can use a clothespin and a cotton ball or a pom pom would work too. And I'm just going to go get my paint. And I'm going to dip it in my paint. I might dip it in my yellow corn syrup paint. And I'm just going to drop. Dip it right onto the circles. Maybe my purple. And just like we do our dots at the school, they don't have to be perfect. The idea is you're following, imitating the action of 
of guiding it on, so just like a dot dot. But if you use the corn syrup one, it's going to be sticky, of course. Or you can use the watercolor one that won't be as sticky. Okay, the watercolor one actually works really well because it, the cotton ball soaks up the whole thing. But it's just not as dark. Of course, you could probably add a lot more. I mean, the Skittles paint, you could probably add a lot more color to it um, to make it darker. Um, but you could also use markers, like I said. That works fine too. So this could come out <laughs> that great, a little bit messy. Um, but you can color it in with, if you have markers. You can always color, color the circles in, um, use crayons, whatever, just to get them kind of using that fine motor skills, imitating the actions that you're doing. So there's a whole bunch of coming. There's pig on the back of this one, but there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can print out if you want to do those. All right. There is um, one more video. It is uh, a song, so with some actions. So I will see you there.